चलो वेलकम एवरीवन टू दिस एपिसोड ऑफ कंसेप्चुअल एनेस्थीजिया एंड इट्स अ फेस्टिवल कमिंग अलॉ अक्रॉस नाइसली इन नॉर्थ इंडियन सिटीज सो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ए बी जी आर्टीरियल ब्लड गैस एनालिसिस सो आई बी टेलिंग द रेलिवेंट पॉइंट्स एंड अ सिस्टमेटिक अप्रोच इन विच यू कैन ईजिली मैनेज टू रीड अ ई बी जी ओके सो द आइडिया इट is to have a practical approach so that when you have a abg in hand and you have a small history in your hand of a patient you can actually within 10 15 minutes or 10 15 seconds read the abg so the idea is that uh, when you take a sample firstly we have to explain it to the patient we should know the indications we should do a modified allen's test to see whether the arterial patency of the radial and ulnar arteries is there and then we should obviously ha- use hand hygiene then take sample and use a calibrated abg machine to assess the samples so this is a modified allen's test the main difference between the allen's and the modified is that you check a single hand in modified allen's whereas in the normal allen's test you used to check both the hands so idea is to clench the fist and make the after compressing the both the arteries and make the hand blanched and then you when you release one artery should and clamp one artery that means that the circulation is only through one artery so that is how you judge the ulnar and the radial patency so if you feel that the patency issue is there and the hand doesn't flush within 5 to 10, 10 seconds actually that means that the circulation is not adequate and ideally if the circulation of an ulnar artery is not sufficient in one hand you should not puncture the radial artery of that hand and you should take the sample from the other hand so what does the abg tell you so these are the i have tried to highlight just the major major indications that come up that we come across in the icu when we actually order a blood gas analysis either a fresh patient comes to us and we do a blood gas analysis to actually look at how the patient is doing what is his oxygenation status so suppose a respiratory failure patient comes a patient with tachypnea and no other symptoms comes a patient you know that is a uncontrolled diabetic and has ketone positive or a patient who is in sepsis or morphine overdose or a patient usually who is at his home and we uh, is on chronic kidney disease is prescribed diuretics and sometimes he has some electrolyte abnormalities so usually the abg analysis and the electrolyte abnormalities go hand in hand so when abg you are seeing the blood gas analysis usually nowadays the strip has a electrolytes it has a lactate it has a cooximetry but today we'll only be doing with blood gas analysis uh, we have actually covered electrolytes before and if you want we can cover the cooximetry part in a later lecture and we also see the oxygenation station so suppose you have a patient of ARDS and you are ventilating the patient here you want to see now we are commonly proning the patients because of severe refractory hypoxemia and when you prone a patient and in normally ARDS patient you do allow a bit of permissive hypercapnia so you want to look at the pH you want to look at the PCO2 again you all mute yourself please and you want to have a look at the oxygenation status so serial blood gas analysis are sometimes done in some patients to look for the various status and how the patient is improving or not improving and if you actually prone or make the patient supine i would request each of you to do a blood gas analysis after 30 minutes to one hour after doing change in position of the patient so these are normal values the ph is around 7.4 the range is 7.35 to 4.5 the po2 normally is 80 to 104 and this is when we breathe at the room air so oxygen fio2 is 0.21 so pf ratio is around 500 the pco2 is 40 bicarb is 24 plus minus 2 base excess is plus minus 2 oxygen saturation is 96 to 98% the sodium is 135 to 148 potassium is 3.5 to 5.5 so we have ionized calcium on the blood gas analysis so it is 1.13 to 1.32 chloride is 98 to 106 and ion gap is 12 millimoles per liter so ph is actually a negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration in the extracellular fluid and remember as the 
hydrogen ion concentration increases the ph decreases that is why it's a negative correlation it is a negative logarithm so when ph is more than 7.45 we move towards alkalosis less than 7.35 we move towards acidosis and just to see at the henderson hasselbalch equation you should be realizing that the bicarbonate is in the numerator and pso2 is in the denominator so when a pso2 rises that means the patient's has having a kind of respiratory acidosis so in acidosis the ph falls so pco2 is in the denominator that is why ph and pco2 are inversely proportional bicarbonate is in the numerator so when numerator increases so bicarb increases that means the ph usually increases we move towards alkalosis then oxygen, we know that the normal PF ratio is 500 and more than 500 is normal. 300 to 500, we know there's some degree of oxygen problem, but still it is manageable. And PF ratio is less than 300, we, we tend to move towards ARDS, mild, moderate and severe. Now, what is respiratory acidosis? We all know that when the CO2 rises, the pH falls. So primary change in these patients is increased PaCO2 and that has led to decreased pH. So first thing that you need to remember here is for each 10 mm mercury increase in PaCO2, the pH decreased by 0 0.05. Okay, so that means that the patient usually is having a 7.4 pH and a PCO2 of, so we know the normal levels, the PCO2 of around 40. So when it moves from 40 to 60, so there is 20 millimeter mercury rise in the PaCO2. So suppose there is a opioid overdose and the patient is not breathing normally, the CO2 rises. So if the CO2 rises by 10, the pH falls by 0 0.05. That means at PCO2 of 50, the pH, if it is totally uncompensated, the pH will go to 7.35. When the PCO2 increases to 60, the pH will become 7.3. If the pCO2 becomes 80, that means 40 is increased. That means the pH will go to 7.2. So that is one thing that you need to remember. For each 10 millimeter mercury increase in pCO2, the pH decreases by 0 0.05. Then we should know that how does the respiratory acidosis get compensated. So there is renal compensation because of the bicarbonate. So when the pCO2 rises, the pH falls. And for increasing the pH, we have to increase the bicarbonate. So bicarbonate increased by 1 milli equivalent per liter for each 10 millimeter mercury rise of pCO2 in case of acute respiratory acidosis. Whereas when it's a chronic respiratory acidosis, this is 4. So bicarb increased by 4 milli equivalent liter per each 10 millimeter rise of pCO2. So we should remember the digits 1 and 4. Okay. So the change in pH and then what is the change in bicarbonate? in case of acute and chronic respiratory acidosis. Now, what are the examples? So, CNS depression because of any maybe opioid overdose, alveolar hypoventilation, COPD, severe acute asthma, thoracic cage restriction. So, all of these can lead to increase in PSCO2 and in, that is respiratory acidosis. Now, what is respiratory alkalosis? Here, the primary change is decreased PSCO2. So, decreased PSCO2 leads to increased pH since they are inversely proportional. So in respiratory acidosis, acidosis for each 10 millimeter change, the rise, uh, the, the change was pH of 0 0.05. Here the pH increased by 0 0.1 for each 10 millimeter fall in the pSCO2. So in acidosis it was 0 0.05, in alkalosis it's 0 0.1. Then the compensation for acute respiratory alkalosis is bicarbonate decreases 2 millimoles per liter for every 10 millimeter fall in the PaCO2 and in chronic it is 5. So remember in, in respiratory acidosis it was 1 and 4 the numbers. In alkalosis it is 2 and 5. And the pH change in case of acidosis was 0 0.05 for every 10 millimeter mercury. Here it is 0 